Well, hello again, everybody. Um, you've caught me on Platonic Solid Day, and this is interesting enough that I would like to document it so that I don't forget how to do it, and also so that maybe you can try. There are five Platonic Solids. One is a cube. This is not a very fair rec representation, but you know what a cube is. Uh, the icosahedron, the dodecahedron, which this one's a little bit flat at the moment, the tetrahedron, and the octahedron. Now if you remember the video I made about the truncated icosahedron, that would be one of these, and truncated means that you sand the tips off, in simple terms. Uh, also, there's a precise mathematical definition for this as well, but let's just stick to the simple stuff. This is the stellated octahedron, and what that means is that you take each of the faces of the octahedron and you extend them in such a way so as to draw them out to a point. And if you look in here, you can see an octahedron in there. And then there's a tetrahedron attached to each one of the faces. Now, I've made one of these before. Here, hold on, I'll cut and show you it. Okay, here we go. This is what it looks like in its solid form. And if you look at the black parts and the red parts, it really is two intersecting tetrahedrons. Very interesting shape. Okay, well, the purpose of what I'm doing here is to show you how I was making some of these wireframe models. And I'm using just regular 12 gauge scrap copper wiring, electrical wiring. And now I want to show you some of the process, so hopefully you can experiment with some of these. Now this might seem a bit simple to you, but this is actually rather important, cutting consistency. If you're going to make models like these, you have to be very consistent with your measurements. All the pieces are exactly the same. Also, I'm orienting the cuts that I make with these little needle nose pliers the same way, so that, here I'll focus. All right, do you see how the tool leaves a wedge-shaped cut on each of the pieces of copper? We want those to be aligned with one another. The reason for this is because if your cuts are aligned with one another, then it will dig into this part the same way that it'll dig into this part. I hope you understand what I mean. It's just something that I learned through trial and error. Now the rest of the procedure is really going to be up to you and trial and error, but the reason that I made this video was to show this trick, because it was incredibly useful. Positioning the pieces in sand makes it very much easier to solder them, because there's really no way to clamp them or anything like that. And I've experimented using flux, and I also experimented using experimented using a couple different sizes of solder. And yes, I did get burned. And believe it or not, I got burned on the coffee can. I heated the coffee can up too much and was burned that way. Most of this is going to be up to you and the amount of trial and error you're willing to do. But the sand is very useful. The sand robs the system of heat very quickly. And you will be able to see that you can hold it that quickly. Because the cold sand steals the heat from the copper. And that makes 
working with this uh, pretty quick and easy. Now you can position them to how you want, expect them to bend or break, and you'll have to reheat, remelt the solder at times. And I wish you luck! You can also use some 24 gauge wire to wrap around your solder joints if you're a little self-conscious about your soldering ability. This is difficult. The soldering is difficult, I will concede. So there's no shame in it. Oh, one more thing. The octahedron, this shape, and you can remember octahedron because it has eight sides. It's really just two pyramids if you look at it. The octahedron is the dual of the cube, which means that at the center of each face, if you were to turn that point into a vertex of a cube, or on a cube, the resultant shape will be the octahedron.